See, uh, any place you go anywhere in the world now, the karma has become a, 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 a word of household, everybody talks about karma and so there's a lot of conceptions about karma, there's some misconceptions also and or maybe the understanding of karma is very, very limited. So I wanted to bring in a more awareness about what karma is, where it lives and how it comes to fruition and uh, it's not only that when you put something physically in motion or you take an action only then you are committing a karma. But karma is done even by just not doing anything, you know, just uh, while you are breathing even then you are in a karmic mode. So there's, uh, it, it, it starts from that level and then it goes into many different levels. So the, the relationship of karma with mind and where it resides, how it comes to fruition, how it forms destiny, how it is related with free will and how you can use uh, free will as karma. And um, also wanted to give an understanding of uh, this life as a human body, how it's been created and why it's been created and uh, how our karmas are responsible for our this existing uh, life. And uh, all the experiences we go through and we question why me and why this is happening to me, the answer lies into the, the karmic principles. And uh, when they come to fruition, we are as human beings or this body is a uh, field of experience. So we go through the experience because of our uh, karmic impressions and all our karmic impressions they reside into subconscious mind which most of the people don't understand. You know? So I wanted to bring overall awareness about uh, karma and give a little more understanding of it and bring it in right perspective. Just taking the same example like your body, so you are who you are is already your previous karma in motion and at maturity and at fruition. So you are going to live your life in this body as who you are and this life has come with certain package which we call destiny and you are going to live that. And in living that process, you can reduce the effect of some of the negative things, negative thoughts or negative karma coming to rotation at certain point. And also you can add on to good karma when it comes to rotation. So essentially you cannot do a real editing, but you can reduce the effect or you can improve the effect. You can improve the effect of good karma when it is in motion, it is in at rotation stage and you are experiencing it at given moment and you can reduce the effect of uh, negative karma. It's like when you have headache, you take a Tylenol and you will not feel it so much. So by doing some spiritual practices, doing some good karma with intention, and doing some uh, positive karma, uh, setting it up in motion, targeted towards negative karma would nullify the effect or reduce the effect of uh, negative uh, karma. So it's like taking the Tylenol. <laughs> so physical yoga came in place because of that, and because of spiritual yoga and also the pranayams, they came in uh, play because of spiritual yoga. So on breath, our body hangs, our mind hangs, our intellect hangs on the breathing. And breathing is divided into five parts in our body and does different, regulates different uh, uh, organs and different parts of body and different systems more profoundly. And then spiritual part of yoga is again divided into four different parts <laughs> and they are, they are like four different routes you take to attain spirituality. But end of the day, each one is going to lead you to a point where you will go beyond mind. So the only thing between your spirit and yourself 
is your mind. So dropping the mind through some way is the key to reach to your soul. See the thing is if we are, you are willing to take the responsibility that I am in this situation and I am responsible for this as due to my own karma which I created and that karma has come back to me. So we pay attention to negative situations more than positive ones and for negative ones we want to blame someone else and for positive ones we want to take the credit. So one of the practices which I was trying to explain in that short period of time there is to become a conscious witness, drashta, you step back and you become a third party to your body and to your mind and with gradual meditation or mindfulness you can become a third party. It's a long practice, it's, it's a gradual practice and slowly you, you know, become a third party to everything. So you completely detach yourself from the world, the world becomes a third party, you are roaming in the world and uh, it's also you become a third party to yourself and to the events, to the thoughts, everything. And as you become that, you realize that you are somebody else. You are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the intellect, you are not uh, who you think you are. All identifications, they drop. So as they drop, you are in total freedom. My life has not been any different than anyone else's. You know, I was born with the same conditioning, same environment, same things and same approach towards life. And so in the process, I might have been a little more curious or a little more a seeker to know uh, what's the mystery, you know. So as I did my practices and moved on, I learned some stuff and discovered some stuff and I, I was uh, very pleasantly could apply them in my life and see the transformation. And the whole purpose is to share, share it with people as much as I can and it gives me tremendous, tremendous satisfaction at soul level <laughs> that if it can transform one person even.